All right. So yes, enthusiasm as there should be, as there must be today at the Bombay Cocktail Bar because today the spotlight is shining on three remarkable women. I can tell you this audience has never been full of as much excitement as they are today. But yes, the ladies behind this wonderful lady-oriented film, which we just can't wait to see. Um, so yeah, so Ratna, Lankrita, Konkana, um, just thank you so much. Congratulations. This wild journey that began with the band, that began with Lady Oriented, which is now, of course, a cause to celebrate. Um, just, yeah, how are you feeling now? Um, you know, yeah, because it, it, it all began so, you know, in, in, in a small way, it was just, a, I felt like a nothing in the sense that Alankrita called me one day and said, you know, this is a script and will you read it? And I said, sure. And I knew her, you know, we had many common friends. I read the script. I loved the script. I th uh, but, you know, I thought it would be one, uh, like, you know, a small little film, you know, about uh, uh, just because I love it doesn't mean that everybody, especially people with money, will also love it. So I thought, okay, well, you know, we'll make it. Uh, Hopefully, we'll be able to finish shooting it. Sometimes, you know, that itself doesn't happen. So to be here today, post everything that's happened, I mean, uh, I'm so grateful yeah. because, you know, no, many films don't get completed. Many films then don't get a good release. Yeah. You know, you don't get f people uh, pushing the film the way it is, having these kind of conversations that we are all the time. I'm very grateful for yeah. that, you know. There's a, there's a saying about, you know, in, in, in trying to smite down something, you create the thing you fear the most, which is precisely what I guess actually the sense about wound up doing so is, is there gratification in that well honestly I can't ever like say that I'm grateful for censorship because I really feel like it shouldn't be there but I think the good thing that did come out of uh, uh, the whole controversy and I mean the fact that they refused certification was I think that um, you know conversations and dialogues I think that we really needed to have started happening and I think uh, you know it's the year 2017 and for the first time I found that uh, uh, you know, people were talking about the male gaze versus the female gaze uh, in cinema, in popular culture. People were talking about representation of female sexuality um, and uh, the inner lives of women on uh, screen. And I think the media as well as uh, so many conversations on social media. And so I feel like the fact that we were having these dialogues and conversation, um, for me that has been like uh, amazing because I feel like uh, the purpose of films is also to you know, start conversations and things like that. Well, I expected this film uh, to uh, to get run into some trouble, not this much of trouble for sure. <laughs> and actually, I was more afraid of other things. I sort of thought, okay, you know, it's a film which is, it's so easy to go wrong with this story. So my first concern was, are we going to get that right? Alankrita has made a film before, but ri literally nobody has made a film like this before. Yeah. So. Is she going to be able to find the balance that is required? Will us as actors be able to do what we are asked to do and do it in a convincing manner? We are all acting outside our area of comfort. You know, we've, we are not people from Bhopal. We are not small town people. We are definitely belong to a different class, a different background. So all those were the big concerns. I mean, this was the Please. last thing <laughs> we could think yeah. of. Yeah. And then the biggest concern of all for me was, we will make this film, we will do all this mehnat and it, you know, everyone will have a ball doing this and at the end of it, nobody will bloody see it. <laughs> and that has happened to so many independent films, it's not funny. The life of an independent film, yeah. after having come to birth, is so much in other people's hands and I've been seeing it for the last 40 years. It hasn't got easier. I mean, amazing, we haven't found a solution. Yeah. We just don't know how to think of a solution for this, but we haven't. Anyway. So that was the fears that I really had. This was a googly. One of the things that I was reading that I loved was that the, the, the germ of this began when you would just look at ordinary people leading ordinary lives and wondering just what was going on mm. underneath. And <coughs> there then this box opens up. So for all of you, um, had there just been moments like that where you've looked at someone, where you've inquired after someone, was it this, the, 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 the absolute ordinariness and extraordinariness of just individual lives. Yeah, I think we're looking at the lives of four fairly ordinary average women, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I think uh, what is uh, extraordinary or what is revolutionary or what is very different about it is that this could have been depicted 
uh, in a very different way. I mean, we one could have looked at it on the surface, one could have stuck to the narrative that is usually imposed upon these lives. But I think Alankita and right from the script itself, you know, w had placed these women in different kinds of situations, you know. So, and e in each situation, in, you know, something else would be revealed of their circumstances, not only of what was, you know, prescribed to them, but also how they were reacting to it, how they were dealing with that, what were their solutions or otherwise. Were there people that you actually knew who who sparked these characters? Uh, you know, I think... Uh, was it a projection almost? I mean, first one, I think it's a very personal film. Yeah. So I feel even though, f like, I haven't inhabited the physical life that uh, the four characters have, I feel like the film has come from a very uh, deeply internal space. And um, so I think it really started with my own idea of feeling like, why do I not feel fully free? And I really do grapple with it because I feel I've not been brought up in a way where there have been any external restrictions yeah. on my freedom. But I keep feeling like something keeps holding me back. So actually, it's emerged from that feeling. And the reason I decided to explore it through these kind of lives is because I wanted to see how does this internal thing play out with external um, sort of circumstances. So I don't, so I feel like uh, none of the characters is actually based on exactly like, okay, I met this person and this character is her. So they're in that sense fictional and imaginary, but I feel the truth of these characters. Um, is something that one sees in women across the board. And I feel even for um, the character that Ratna plays, I'm, I've, I've grown up a lot in small town India. And you know, like, um, uh, I remember one of the buildings where I used to live in, in Patna, there was a, 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 a now who now I felt was like an old woman who had been widowed, but a young, uh, actually I think she wouldn't have been more than like in her late 40s or early 50s, a widow who I, actually looking after her brother's grandchildren and doing nothing else and she would eat separately. It was like this is a strange kind of existence. Later I thought that maybe all those memories are also sort of there. Yeah. You said it's the kind of role that you just sit back and wait for. Um, when it came though, um, did you, were there nerves at all? Was there anything you were um, particularly excited or particularly scared about portraying? Lots of excitement. I really wanted to find out about this person. Yeah. I have always believed that uh, lives of ordinary people are so extraordinary in so many ways and there are so many amazing stories hiding there. Uh, we don't explore it often enough. And then when we do find ordinary people to make stories about, we make them even more ordinary for some reason. You know, we make them boring. And here's a film where the ordinary people are not in the least bit boring. I found that extra, th that's what I've always believed, that uh, ordinary people aren't boring in the least bit. And there's so much. You just have to scratch the surface a little bit and all kinds of interesting things start coming out. So that was the excitement that I found in the script itself. So there was the fear, as I said earlier, of, of, of are we going to get it right? But the excitement far outweighed the <laughs> fear, if any. All right, so we're going to open it up to them in a bit, but can we just introduce uh, these, these four wonderful protagonists to them right now? My character is called Shireen Aslam, and she's, uh, uh, she's probably a woman in her 30s who has three children. Uh, she's in a, a complicated marriage, and she comes from, uh, you know, she lives in old Bhopal in the same kind of um, uh, area as, as the other characters, and she knows them a little bit. And uh, she's uh, from quite a conservative family. Uh, she uh, is not really expected to work outside the house, but she has her own uh, ambitions, her own desires, her own, um, you know, dreams about how her life should be. Even though she accepts in many ways the roles that she is supposed to fulfill as per society, as per her milieu, and how she goes about trying to accomplish her, um, her own uh, hidden desires. And uh, I'm playing Usha Buaji. She's a widow, uh, probably widowed, very uh, young. She says that it's in the Bhopal gas tragedy. So I'm presuming she must have just been married when this thing happened and she lost her husband in that. And she's looked after the family, consisting of her nephews and her grandnephews and family. And um, she's now about 55, 60-ish, supposedly now time for satsang and puja part and all that. And she decides to learn how to swim. It's just as something yeah. that she wants to do for herself rather than for anyone else. And not even with the awareness of wanting to do something for myself, you know. Sometimes we don't even know what we are missing in our lives. And that's what's so special about ordinary lives. So Usha has that little twist. 
that's amazing. And, and the, the other two? Uh, the, the youngest uh, character is a character called Rihanna Abibi, played by Plavita Borthakur. And uh, she is this um, girl who's in her first year in college. And uh, she comes from a conservative uh, um, family. And uh, she goes to college every day, um, trying to be somebody else, wanting to be accepted. So her journey is about um, wanting to be cool, wanting to sing, wanting to be part of the cool set and the sort of contradictory uh, lives that she has to sort of lead. Um, then there is uh, Leela Kumari who is um, played by Ahana Kumra and um, she's in her 20s. She's a beautician and uh, she's been raised uh, by a single mother and she's um, basically uh, engaged to be married to one boy but uh, she's having uh, um, an affair with uh, a wedding videographer and um, what she's really seeking is escape from the claustrophobia of uh, the small town. So, like I said at the beginning, you know, usually I, I tend to do a fair bit of the talking. It's probably just as well that this audience is enthusiastic enough that in this case I can't. So yeah. we're going to open up the house to them. I think you've got the first question. Hello all, my name is Surbi and uh, like uh, we've seen the trailer, it's, it looks very interesting and liberating. There is a lot of social pressure and restrictions which is imposed on women. So has there been any real life situation wherein you had to face a social restriction or pressure? Three guesses. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 100% yes. 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 <laughs> all of us go through that, man or woman.